are you doing? Uh, I'm practicing. Yeah, but on the toilet. Yeah, well, I like the echo. Okay. Um, yeah. So can you shut the door, please? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Welcome to the mundane world of Nick Dutton. On a Thursday afternoon, preparing for a gig by making up some new leads. Now, my first question is, since what I have understood is that you work like a plumber. Is it your profession? Work or like you... a plumber, or is that, is that work like a Trojan? <laughs> no, I'm or just... a Trojan plumber? <laughs> no. um, some say it is, yes. Yeah. Uh, I do the odd job here and there for yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you understand that meaning. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah, so, but um, do you have a uh, connection before to the music business or...? or yes, I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and amazingly, a connection to the plumbing business. Okay. But that's going back a long, 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 long time. time. Yeah. Music, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, yes. I used to be in bands years okay. ago. Back in the punk era. Okay. 1976, 77. Formed a band with some old mates, young mates then, actually, yes. 77, I was, how old was I then? 22, 22. Uh, formed a punk band, none of yeah. us could play. No. Managed to get a gig in London, in, in uh, the London College of Printing, which is actually a, quite an established venue for musicians to play. And, um, I don't know, yeah, we just sent them some photographs, no music or anything, and they, they, they liked the look. And we just rocked up there, borrowed the uh, the the headline that we were just supporting, borrowed the, 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 the headline band's gear, all their equipment, just turned everything up to 11, as you do, and just bashed away on various bits of equipment, making a hell of a racket. And uh, that was our first gig. Of course, we were, you know, thrown off stage by the, the headline band because we were ruining all their equipment. Um, but we got a taste for, yeah. taste for it after that. And, uh, and how old were you when you realised that you had a taste for music like that, that you wanted to...? Yeah, I was, I was about 20, 21. Okay. Just then. I mean, the, punk, the whole punk explosion in the UK was just fantastic. It inspired people to, well, to get off their butts yeah. and do something. And it didn't matter if you could play or not. It was just the, it was just the, uh, you know, the, 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 the passion, I suppose. And people had a lot of messages to to say that like, you know, political or otherwise, and that was never my bag. I just wanna have a lot of fun. Anyway, we took the band a bit more seriously and blah 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 de blah and it went through various personnel changes and eventually we split up. Um, then I formed another band called Killed in Action. With some mates. Yes, yes, exactly. We used to dress up in American army uniform and sing songs about uh, dropping bombs on the dead cold. Sorry. <laughs> Yes, avoid camera shake. I know it was hilarious, but we got some fantastic gigs out of it. All around London, we used to play all the pubs. Uh, played in France, got a fantastic gig in France, playing in a chateau for a, um, this French countess was getting married. And she saw the band playing in London in a, one of the small clubs there, and she said, I want this band at my wedding. So we all rocked up in our khaki camouflaged Ford Transit van down to the south of France and played the most mad, I mean we were doing mad punk stuff then. It was, so we were playing this mad punk stuff to all these uh, jitterbugging um, French aristocracy wearing, wearing their bow ties and drinking champagne. It was just the most unbelievable juxtaposition. It's just mad, mad time. So that was, that was a great highlight of my musical career back in the 80s. Then I, um, I, thought I, I put a music studio together. We used to rehearse in, in London. And um, I thought, ah, this is a good idea to make uh, some money out of people's aspirations to be famous pop stars, because we weren't going anywhere, basically, not, not making any money out of it. So, so I, I put together a music studio uh, in Clink Street in London Bridge, right on the river, beautiful position. Um, built three rehearsal studios, this is 1984. Uh, ran that for, had that business for, uh, for six, seven, eight years. 
and it was, it's a great time. I had an absolute party for eight years. Met some fantastic people. Mad bands, you know, came through there. I built a 24-track recording studio upstairs, which was kind of uh, interesting, but not as good as the, not as much fun as the rehearsal studios. So yeah, so I made a bit of money out of music, you know. Hmm. Um, great times. Yeah. Did you enjoy the evening? Yeah, it was great. It was great. Yeah. It was, well, what was the best uh, evening? I'm from Oslo, huh? Huh? What was the best of the evening? Yeah. 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 Y
many people ask this question. Yeah. And I ask the same question to many people because it's interesting. And the yeah. people have the different reasons for yeah. moving away or yeah. whatever. We just came here for a week's holiday. Yeah. Uh, 16 years ago. Um, Amy, and our daughter, was then two years old. Our son hadn't entered anything, wasn't around then. Um, uh, yeah, so we loved it. And so we came back for four months the following year, um, which was great. Not with the intention of buying anything. Um, but then, you know, it's like you kind of look around, sniff around at properties, bits of land here and there. And ended up buying the house which we currently live in up the road in Gavalahori, old stone house. So we thought, we went back to, drove back to the UK and thought, okay, we've got a commitment now to come back. We've got to come back to fix the place up. And, um, which we did. Uh, our son then was born and he was five months old. Alex was five months old when we drove down here. Rocked up to Gavalahori, looked at the place and thought, bloody hell, what have we done? Rented a place in Plaka for a year, fixed the old stone house up. And um, never looked back. I met some great people here. Yeah. Well. Hmm. So, yeah. Okay. That's. He's a, terrible, he's a terrible show off in front of the Yeah, house. mad. Okay. You would never Let's catch me doing anything like Yeah, it's better. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Here we go. Here we go. When you smile, the, the world is brighter. You touch my hand and I'm a king Your kiss to me is worth a fortune Your love for me is everything But I guess I'll never know The reason why you love me as you do So um, now you play in the box in the Rock and Rebels. Yeah. And and how did uh, you come to the Rock and Rebels? How did you? Ah, ha yeah. ha. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Again, to search through my grey matter. That was about three years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. In fact, it was at this very place we are now, Monica's, where um, I've, I've I've met Carl before um, to do, funnily enough, to do some plumbing work around his house couple of times and um, heard he, you know, was a guitarist and blah 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 blah, but people have been saying. And I thought, ah, interesting. Um, then he was playing down here. Uh, he, he'd arranged to come down here to play with uh, a guy called John, who plays guitar. He's got a house around the corner, he doesn't live here all the time. I've seen him for a while, I That's beside the point. Um, so yeah, he was going to come to play a bit of guitar with John and said to me, because he knew I had this box. And I, that's right, because I'd been playing with John with this box before, a couple of times, because I know him quite well. So, um, so Carl rocked up and he said, oh, here, here, buddy, here, buddy. Why don't you bring your box along? Okay, why not? So we had a bash here, me, John and uh, Carl, bash away in the box. Great, I thought it was great. And then we, we carried on doing that down here and then then we got, uh, yeah, that, that's when we first got involved with um, the charity, with the uh, Jed and Judy's charity, Sarah's Hope. And if I remember rightly, we did a gig at, actually, it wasn't one of our first together. What was it? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. We did a couple, anyway, just Carl and myself uh, for, 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 for Jed, just, just the two of us. And it was a, it was at um, Iraqi in Almeria, where Carl and I were doing a gig. Probably got this from the others as well. Where uh, Trevor, who we, no, neither of us knew, rocked up at the gig and said, Oh, can I play bass for you? 
So Carl and I looked at each other and like, who is this guy? So, did he actually play bass that night? Or, oh, what? no, he didn't. No, no, he didn't. No, because it was just Carl and I, that's right. And, he said, and we said, uh, I don't think so, buddy. Because, you know, obviously. You know. But we liked his front coming up, you know, it's like a great, Trevor, brilliant. So subsequently, yes, we uh, basically had him in the band because of that that one night of him having the front to come up and say, oh, no, play bass. And, uh, yes. That's how it started. That's how it started. Mm. That's how it started. About three years ago now. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and why do you think um, uh, Collex and the Rock and Rebel are so popular? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> no, that's not true. Carl is a Carl is a, an immense character. You know, he's an amazing guy, and um, and he's also a brilliant guitarist. And I don't know. We got this chemistry, I think, going the three of us. Four of us, including Brian, of course, now. Uh, well, certainly the original crew. Um, and it's just, well, the whole band, it's just, um, I think that rubs off on people when we play, you know. We are genuinely having a, an absolute ball up there when we're playing in front yeah. of people. And that's what it's all about. It's just yeah. having fun and entertaining people. Okay, you know, it's, it's very, it's not formulaic as such, but, you know, we got this set now and yeah we're bringing some new stuff and, and that but you know people come and see us and over and over and over again they, they, they know exactly what to expect they, they still absolutely love it which is great so I, I don't know it just has become popular yeah know, it's just bizarre and uh, another question because there is a myth that says that all musicians have groupies so my question is does rock and rebel have that uh, <laughs> If we do, I'm unaware of <laughs> We don't get knickers thrown at the stage, if that's No, true. but you know that, that there are women or men who you can see that are m more interested because you are a musician. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yes, 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 yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. And that yeah. was quite evident at a gig we did recently at Fimari. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's obvious. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I guess so. Well, that's kind of nice. Isn't yeah, it? but it, I'm just asking because since I have been with you, I have eyes too. So it's interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult to be objective when you're actually in the band. Yeah, yeah. In some ways, yeah. it needs a. Uh, it's true. It needs a third pair of eyes. Eyes, oh, yeah. Actually. But I think you you need to see sometimes because sometimes it's so obvious. Yes. Yeah. I just can't, I, I have my eyes closed most of the time when I'm playing anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, don't know, I haven't got a clue what's going on around me. I'm just listening. I can't help it. I've got to close my eyes to to listen to the music. To to you know what it's like. like, it's like you, you're listening to some great music and you've got a pair of headphones on. You don't want to see what's around. It's a distraction to listen to the music. So that's why I shut my eyes. Apart from like, when I know I'm, when we're coming to the end of a song, I have to kind of do that to see, just to make sure. I got Carl's cues for, for you know whatever we're going to do next or whatever. So yeah, but most of the time I'm like this. Well, uh, so I thought well I'll ask you to. Nothing actually fine. Yeah, yeah, it's just not that nice. Of course. Must be a... <laughs> did you hear that? Did you get that on camera? I did. <laughs> I did. In fact, I'm not eating all day. I must be ill. <laughs> yeah. Sympathy about. Sorry, Carl. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so this this part of the thing on my finger is that part of the bottle neck there. You see? See? Can you see that? So that's that. Just makes it easy to have it on your finger instead of the whole bottle. But I will give you a quick demonstration. Right, here we go. There's no problem having the fixed labels on there. But... <laughs>
back to the music. <laughs> back to the music. Yeah, as a child, what were you listening on? Oh, yeah. oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's right. Before we were so rudely interrupted by one of my clients. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, yes, uh, I didn't really listen to it, oh, apart from Shirley Bassey, who I thought was brilliant. Uh, my mother had slightly more eclectic tastes, and she used to listen to... Um, Nat King Cole, uh, kind of a lot of jazz, you know, this is kind of, um, I mean, I would have been 10 in 1965 to give you some idea, mm. so, um, it was about that time when the, you know, early 60s jazz was popular. My mother was a, she was a kind of pre-hippie, you know, beatnik artist style thing and uh, used to listen to it, all sorts of music. So that was great. So she, her, her musical tastes were a big influence on I, what I first listened to, I have to say. However, when Radio 1 hit the airwaves in 19... Actually, no, before that, pre that, there used to be all the pirate radio stations. Radio Caroline, Luxembourg, uh, Radio 247, London. Radio London was a pirate station originally, which came... Especially Radio Luxembourg was one of the first ones that started. That was a great station. We had our little tinny transistors and we used to listen to uh, Luxembourg. And this is about 1965-66 when all, you know, pirate radio really took off. So we were, our musical tastes from that point were hugely influenced by pirate radio. Pirate radio, wonderful. Which spawned BBC Radio 1. Uh, the first official pirate radio station which was hilarious, of course, because they, they, BBC could afford to pay all the pirate radio DJs to come and join the BBC, which they did, of course. Hence, Radio 1 was born. So we used to listen to Radio 1. And my father, was a, he was a great engineer, and he built all these mad things, hi-fi and all sorts of stuff, and tape recorders. And so we, and we had this old valve radio. He made this tape recorder so we could record Pick of the Pops with Alan Freeman in 1967 onto an old Grundy, for all you audio files out there, Grundy TK20 um, tape machine, reel to reel. So we could record all our favourite shows on Radio 1 and listen to them back in the glory, in glorious mono. Um, so yeah, but the sort of stuff that, that, that Radio 1 was putting out, the output, I mean, the very first song that Radio 1 played was... Uh, <clears throat> a song by a band called The Move, and it was Blackberry Way, if I remember rightly. Yes. So it was kind of the pop stuff, you know, mid-60s pop stuff, I suppose I got into, in a big way. But then, <clears throat> then of course, uh, the whole prog rock thing hit. 68, 69, hippies, you know, blah, blah, blah. Got into... Started getting into you know, like Crosby, Stills and Nash, um, uh, and yeah. uh, <clears throat> so a lot of hippie stuff, you know, like Grateful Dead, and uh, then I got heavily into, started listening to more uh, uh, underground stuff. Then Velvet Underground, 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 Velvet, Un Velvet Underground from New York City, who turned out to be one of my favourite all-time bands ever to this very day. Huge influence, the Velvet Underground. Now, they started playing music in 1965, which was pretty astonishing. The stuff they were coming out with was absolutely zillions of years ahead of its time. Amazing band. And so I got into, obviously, Lou Reed's um, solo stuff. And glam rock, David Bowie. David Bowie is my second favourite artist, I would say, yeah. Um, and from there, anything, really. Reggae, big time. I know Carl hates reggae, it's funny. There is every time I mention reggae and how I love reggae. Oh, constantly reggae stuff. I hope he sees this. So I love reggae, especially roots, dub heavy Jamaican, you know, original heavy, heavy, heavy. I've got loads of reggae, original reggae vinyl. Um, Scar, of course, precursor to reggae. Um, Anything really. Lot I listen to a lot of indie stuff now, you know, a lot of mm. contemporary indie mm. bands. Anything that floats me about. Mm. Really. Um, rock and roll, of course. Ah, a fantastic gig. Bill Haley and the Comets, live at the Victoria Apollo 
And that was a fantastic gig. So yeah. I mean, rock and roll is the roots of everything, isn't it, really? Yeah. Blue, well, blues is the roots of rock and roll, is the roots of most modern music. I just, I don't know. I got no, I just like and listen to anything. You know. Yep. And is of course, Carl Axon and the Rock and Rebel. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and but they're all cover versions that. anyway. <laughs> and um, is it any other person that has inspired you when you were young? In any way, in the way that you have... Uh, what, musically or just, just generally? Just generally, if you look just generally. Yeah, as a musician too, but is it anybody or... Because you talked about David Bowie and that inspired, but is it somebody that has just got stuck? And not necessarily a musician? No, know? not necessarily a musician. You see, I can't say truthfully yes that, because in theory that person should have immediately sprung to mind, should they not? Mm, no. Um, nah, I, I, I don't know, really. Mm. And nothing re really leaps out yeah. as a... No, did you, if you say, like, did, did you have an uh, idol then? <sighs> that you have posters of or no. something? No. <laughs> no. No, I, there's, there's certain artists I like. Um, um, painters. Ah. That sort of artist. Um, I, was a, I was always a huge fan of uh, pre- and post-revolutionary Russian art from the early 1900s. Rijenko, Kandinsky, who's not actually Russian, but there you go. Uh, Malevich, people like this. I love that. I love that. I love that stylistic and the photography as well from that period, the black and white photography. That is a, that was just to me a, revel, a revelation. Getting into that. That is one of my, still is one of my passions. Yeah. That art from that period and, and all the social aspects that go with it and, and how they came to produce this fantastic yeah. stuff. Uh, and, that, and, and, and how that was used in, in, uh, commercially in, 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 um, for Russian um, you know, advertisements, mm -hmm. hoardings or whatever in that period. I love that. So, yeah, that's... Um, from, from 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 art from an art point of view, I love that 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 stuff. Uh. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did you enjoy the evening? Oh, it's fantastic! <laughs> I loved it. So, what was the best? Oh, just the music, it's fantastic! I loved it. All the, the, you know, everything: blues, rock, roll, everything. Everything. It's a big big uh, spectrum for everybody to uh, to look at for the music, you know. Great. Uh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Have a look outside and many people. Yes, fantastic. it is fantastic. Great, thank that you. shows you how good it was. Yeah, okay? yeah great, thank you. <laughs>
but uh, no, I suppose that, that, that's not quite true. There must have been an element of nerves to start with. You know, uh, you know, you kind of think, you know, are you good enough for the band even or whatever? And I've had a few moments mm. like I think, you know, I play a box for God's sake. It's not as if it's a John Bonham's drum kit. So I always slightly feel that I, I've got to try and uh, hold my own there a bit, I suppose, you know. Yeah. For the rest of the guys yeah. to try. But I think, having said that, we've got a really unique sound because of that. Uh, or it's one of the elements. And, and so, you know, it works because mm. of that, mm. perhaps. And um, how do you prepare uh, for a gig? Like now, yeah, I can see that this is for tomorrow. You do. Yeah, a couple of, I need a couple of short leads just to go from my uh, monitor amp to the, um, to the main mixing desk. Yeah, because I'm always borrowing other people's leads, and it's about time I had a couple of my own. Ah, uh, and do, is it something sp specially do accept this to prepare the same day when you're gonna have the gig, or is it just an ordinary day? Or what well, today's? Um, oh, this is just an ordinary day. I'm <laughs> No. You want to see how many <laughs> cables I've got back there? I have thousands. No. I open my wardrobe and there's just all these. No, <laughs> no, no. You don't do this every day. I get it. No, I don't. But, I... but is it something? Do you um, take a moment and be for yourself or anything just before you're gonna go? Oh, before a gig. Yeah, before what a I, gig. What do I usually do before a gig? Yeah. Sleep. Sleep. Two hours minimum. Um. I've got yeah, to, yeah. you know, because we all, it's really draining. I mean, just playing for three hours, it's, it's mentally and physically, that it's, it's everything exhausting. I mean, everything. Um, and I'm not getting any younger these days, you know. So, um, yeah, I've got to have a couple of hours, yeah. a, a long yeah. power nap. Yeah, yeah before a gig and I, then I find I can stay up to two, three, four in the morning or whatever, no problem. If I don't, then it's like, you know, yeah. I don't play my best for a start and I'm tired when I turn up the gig. So, um, I've got to have a kit. Absolutely number one essential important thing to do. Okay. Uh, and I just want to ask, do you have but, any special memory that is connected to the Rock and Rebels? Any gig that was special <laughs> or... or well, they're all, here's another classic, classic cliche, they're all special in their own way. Um, yes. There must be one or two, I suppose. I mean, obviously the big gigs are great, you know. Um, Embros Neros. We played the last, is it the third time he just played? Yeah, it is the third time he played there this year. Yeah. They're always special. This year's was especially special. Why, was why was it so special then? Well, they, 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 the place, I mean, it's a fantastic place and they've actually almost finished it now and they've added another two or three tiers of seats around. So it's, it's even more spectacular and it's just like massive, you know, and it's just a lot of people there, more people than ever, I think, this year. And the, it was, all the bands did brilliantly. I mean, it's great. It's a fantastic event. It really is to, to, to play. And but everyone got on so well, you know. It's like a well, you were there. It's a, it's a mm. great, one big party. And it's nice to come on, just when that light is, and it's just when it's still daylight, but not that, that kind of twilight. And then you put the lights on, you know, the big lights. And as the sun drops down, and you're playing, and it's that's fantastic feeling. And every, all the crowd are just awesome there, you know. So that was that was um. Obviously that's memorable because it was very recently and I can still remember it, sure. Previous gigs, um, Cotton Club. Always the Cotton Club. Every gig there is memorable. Yeah. For obvious reasons. It's just, no, it's just a, it's a fantastic venue. Cotton Club, it's gotta be the number one, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I once had a friend who said to me that if you are creative, sooner or later you're going to start believing God. So I just want to ask you, do you believe in God or something similar? No. Like, no. But do you believe that there is something else, like uh, you create your own life or 
energies or something. Well, obviously, you create your own life, don't you? Yeah, yeah, but not. It's not everybody that believes that you you uh, uh, actually create your own life. They think it just happened to you. Uh, well, I'm a believer in both, actually. Yes, I'm yeah. a great believer in in destiny and or fate and things happening to you and let, they, or things will take their course. But obviously, uh, you have to put a little pinch of yeah. creativity in to, to, to um, possibly choose which path you're going to take. Yeah. You must do, otherwise you're just going to be sitting, sitting around doing nothing, aren't you? Yeah, but do you believe if you're in... If you sit around doing nothing, then nothing's going to happen. You've got to do at least something to make it yeah. set the yeah. ball rolling. Yeah, but do you believe in... Um, what they're talking about positive energies, you know, that you can choose to have a positive focus or you can choose to have a negative. Do you think that... Yeah, but in that's that just a state of mind. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, it is. I agree with you. But do you think that you can choose that? What, on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You wake up in the morning, you want to feel positive, you feel positive. Yeah. Or if you're feeling, or if you're not... I mean, you can, yes, I think you can change the state. Yes, because your mind is a, an amazingly powerful tool. So you can change, which you can. Yeah. I think you can Do you think you can train the mind? Without to... drugs and alcohol. Yeah. You can. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. For sure. Um, yes. And the biggest drug for me is sitting on my cajon when everything is just going so brilliantly and there's a fantastic audience out there and the music sounds great. That is the best, best high in the whole the whole world it really is genuinely yeah it really is so okay yeah. and then i have a um, last question what do you want your legacy to be as a person <laughs> deep. yeah it's the as a person and as a musician if i selected what would you like people to say about you <laughs> No, at the time, what what would you, you know, you leave behind? Um, oh, he was a jolly good chap, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, I have one more question. Go on then. Yeah. Uh, is it anything? that you would like to tell the people who's going to watch this documentary, this DVD? Uh, keep on supporting Carl Axon and the Rockin' Rebels, guys. Because we love you all. <laughs> he said with sincerity. Yeah.